<laughs> well, we know a good diet and exercise are great for your health, but did you know that giving is as well? That's right. Dr. Tracy Alloway is a professor of psychology at the University of North Florida and author of eight books, but actually that needs to be <laughs> updated because you got a contract to do even more books. Yes, I'm doing some children's books know, all about yeah. special needs, pitching them as superheroes, so I'm really excited about that. Well, this is cool because <laughs> one of the things that we're talking about today is we're talking about giving and giving Tuesday and giving in general apparently studied children and saw that there's a difference between men and women? Yeah, so there's a fun game that we can play and they do this with children, they do this with adults and you give someone a pot of money and you say if you had a pot of money would you keep it to yourself? Would you share it? If you do share it, how much would you share to a male, a female, to an organization or to an individual? And those nuances are really interesting, not just in how people behave, but also in what's going on in the brain. So a study that just came out this week showed that for women, when they choose to share the majority of the money, the brain's reward center, it's a striatum, is activated. So when they're acting generously, they're thinking, this is good, they're feeling great. But for the men, when they keep most of the money, and they're acting what you may consider maybe selfishly, their reward center is being activated. So they're thinking, this is, this is a good move for me. <laughs> well, that, that makes sense just as far as evolutionarily. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, women providers, like my wife right now, they give everything to that child. Sure. They give their entire lot, life and body to that child. Men, gatherers, mm -hmm. you know, it, it kind of seems to make sense, but I didn't realize there'd be an actual like, chemical difference. There's definitely a difference in the brain, and we see that difference even, as you mentioned, from childhood and how we reward and how we kind of, um, train our children, if you will, by the kind of praise we give them. When girls share, they tend to receive more praise, more smiles, more well done. It's really great you're sharing. When boys are competitive, and that's that kind of selfish, just keep your resources to yourself, hunter-gatherer approach, then they're praised. They're like, good job, way to go, you know? Well, that and goes so, in line with, I've heard previous studies show that in a village, say in, in, in a village, a third world country or, or an area that's poor, if they give the woman, the cow, the resources, mm -hmm. the money, that the whole community benefits. They've shown that if they give it to the men, the men then spend it on themselves <laughs> and the community as a whole doesn't benefit. And that's sure. why there's so many programs uh, for the cows that you give to women who are learning uh, to, to uh, make jewelry or sew or run a farm. Mm -hmm. so that really Really does go right in line with what they're actually finding works when they're trying to improve communities. Absolutely. We're seeing a nice one-to-one -one correspondence behind, behind, between these kinds of behaviors and how the brain is rewarding you. So when the women are sharing the cows or sharing, you know, something money with, with people, their brain is rewarding them, which makes them more likely to continue. Because I'm a giver, so I'm always looking for organizations <laughs> to give to, and I'm always researching that. Sure. And when I found that study, I was like, okay, that's then what I'm going to focus on. I need to buy my, a cow. I'm, I, I have bought a goat. I've bought a goat. I haven't bought a cow. Well, I, I like to, I like to think we're in 2018 and men and women we men we can learn from a little bit of this. So there's ways that that uh, if you're not like this already that we can practice and 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 grow the giving spirit inside of us? Yeah, so there's three tips. The first thing is to just practice an act of kindness every day. And positive psychologists find that this is a really helpful way to develop your sense of empathy and altruism, which we know, as you mentioned um, in the lead, not only does it make us feel good, but studies of over 7,000 adults show that it can also add years to your life. So if you'd like to live a little longer, having that altruistic attitude can do that for you. So, um, and what was interesting is when I was doing the research, studies also show that not just doing an act of kindness, but even imagining an act of kindness. So when you're kind of waking up and you're thinking, am I gonna hit that snooze button? Close your eyes and think, I'm gonna imagine smiling at that coworker. I'm gonna imagine you know, giving someone a sandwich. I'm gonna imagine that act of kindness and that has the same benefits. Your thoughts become your actions, actions become your reality. Mm -hmm. so exactly, I love sense. that. Yeah. <laughs> and empathy is another form of kindness and giving as well. Does that qualify as kind of doing your act of kindness by practicing empathy? Yes, and here's what's fascinating. And this study was specifically with children and they found the same part of the brain linked is activated when you're empathetic as well as when you use self-control, which seems really puzzling. They don't seem to necessarily go together, but the explanation the researchers put forward is that it's your present self that uses self-control because you have empathy. You're able to put yourself in your future self's position. So you're thinking, my future self would like to graduate from college. So my present self has to use self-control and just kind of hunker down and study and, and do a good job. And so empathy and self-control are really good, not just for other people, but for yourself as well. 
All right, and this last one is uh, find a community. What is, it, what is that about? Yes, and this is based on my own research that I did at UNF with a graduate student, Heather Sissel. And we had a great chance to look at a few hundred people, all different ages, different demographic backgrounds, international as well, not just in the US. And we found one of the key things that helped people feel more altruistic was that they belonged to a sense of community. We found this online, and this was reflected offline. So the more they felt that they belonged to a community, and again, for us, what was interesting is that this was also for an online community. You know, if you're following a group or you kind of, you know, you're talking about the dogs earlier on and if you you have that community going on, that's going to make us more likely to feel altruistic. Well, and empathetic and like you're like, I already feel like she's my friend now. I'm like, there you, you know go. what? I'll send you some links. We'll chit chat on the app. So you do, you feel connected and bonded and responsible. Exactly. And that's an easy way and a fun way to, to develop that sense of altruism. Find good a community. Stuff. Good stuff. Always good talking to you. Thank you both. And thank <laughs> you for you the advice as always. <laughs>